So many people get stressed when they try to be more technical in order to be a better PM. It seems so hard sometimes. You never studied computer science and haven't ever coded. So you spend a bunch of time trying to learn Python and reading books about software engineering and you still can't understand how to build products. And sometimes you even feel like this is not for you and you think about quitting. Well, don't. Seriously, don't give up because in this video, I'm going to give you five practical tips that have helped me become much more technical as a product manager. And I believe that they'll be useful for you as well. Also at the end, I will share a bonus tip that will help you improve your communication with engineers and be more impactful as a product manager. But first, let me tell you a little bit about my background. During my first job after college, I became interested in product management and I wanted to own something end to end and work with multiple teams to bring it to life. I knew it would also give me a lot of growth opportunities in the world of tech. So I started learning more about the role. This was back in 2012 and the resources around the role were really limited. So I read some popular books, but didn't really have the technical experience or skills to excel in the room. So over the years, I've mostly learned from reading blogs and doing online courses. I realized that I can learn tech skills much faster just on my own. And throughout my career, I've led many technical products, including fiber telecom services, device authentication, SSO, and even developer API infrastructure. So here are those five practical tips that have helped me become more technical as a product manager. Let's go. So the first one is Harvard Access CS50 Computer Science for Business Professionals. The reason this course is so great and impactful is because it has been tailor-made for product managers and is a great resource to get the basics of computer science as a product manager and as a generalist who is not going to be writing code day to day, but just needs to understand how code works and what the process of building algorithms and systems is. This will also help you answer technical PM interview questions, like what happens when you hit search on Google or how our database is structured and broken down. Okay, next is Technically, which is a blog that is fantastic about breaking technical concepts down using simple metaphors and examples. This blog post, for example, talks about databases and actually maps databases to different types of flour. There's always a flour that is all-purpose flour, which can be used for anything. But then there is also very specific flour that is used for specific types of baking and foods. Databases are very similar and this blog post does a fantastic job of breaking all of that down and explaining it in very simple terms and concepts. This is another one that talks about passkeys and why passwords are going to be gone in the future and how passkeys are going to replace passwords. It goes through how passwords work and keep everything encrypted and how passkeys will enhance that experience from a security and a user experience point of view. This blog is a treasure trove of technical resources and explanations that will help you build a lot more empathy with your engineers and with your technical customers. Next is Byte Byte Go's newsletter. This is another phenomenal resource for understanding a lot of technical aspects and components in very simple manner. While this blog is targeted towards engineers, Reading some of these and getting some idea of these concepts will help you speak to your engineers much better and help you understand some of the technical trade-offs that the engineers come to you with. So a few posts I recommend are one, this one around passwords, session tokens, and generally how authentication works. This is another one that talks about messaging queues and some of the underlying systems that go into building a product. And third is this crash, crash course on DNS or how a lot of the aspects of the web really work and how DNS servers help route traffic across the internet. So next is a great book called The Mythical Man Month. I've read this book and it's been a phenomenal read. Uh, basically the book talks about why writing code and deploying code are very different things. Uh, deploying an actual working product takes a lot longer than just writing code and there are a lot of components that go into deploying products. 
beyond just the writing of the code. For example, building the databases, deploying things, building a DevOps infrastructure, building tooling, metrics, analytics, all of these things that go around the organization of code beyond just the writing of code. This will give you a great understanding of how code is actually written and deployed into working products and why your engineers always give you estimates that seem very high for the kind of tasks and code that needs to be written. And finally, now with Medium, YouTube and ChatGPT, we have no excuses to learn a lot of these concepts. I'll link to a few random resources that I've found that are very helpful. For example, this Medium post about explaining computer science like I'm five, very good high level overview. Uh, Crash Course has a whole series on computer science and this tells you exactly how computers work, what the different levels of abstraction are and what puts all of these things together. This is very technical, so feel free to skim this or just hear this in the background. Uh, Enrico's channel is great because he does a lot of tech breakdowns and so he goes into the underlying psychology and philosophy and execution of what goes on behind the scenes for a lot of these products. Uh, this is a great video where uh, Harvard professor David Malin, who is actually the professor of CS50, which I talked about earlier, he breaks down algorithms into five levels of difficulty. So if you can follow along this entire video, that's a great starting point for understanding algorithms and understanding computer science. And finally, there's a bunch of videos out there of how can you learn anything with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a great resource to not just understand and get answers to things, but it will also give you a breakdown of what you should be thinking about and what the 80-20 principle is for learning any new concept. The key thing with all of this is to just be curious, curious about anything that's going on technically around you, like how does this keyboard work or how does this uh, this monitor work, how is uh, HDMI piping into this to display my screen or how do I use multiple monitors or how does Bluetooth work, anything around you. As long as you're curious about how it works at a technical level, you can start searching for the answers and get into that level of thinking and depth. And finally, the best way to hone all of these skills is to actually discuss this with your engineers, take them out for lunch, take them out for a coffee, or just go by their desk and chat about the latest code that they shipped or the latest trade-off that they talked about in a meeting. Just get more FaceTime with your engineers, speak to them, and even tell them a little bit about what you're learning and get their thoughts on what are you missing and what you should be reading next. And now the biggest hurdle that I've seen people face when they are trying to get into product management is that you need to know how to code. But is that actually true? I cover all of this and more in this video, so be sure to watch that next.